Hello, I'm Li Hao. Today I'm going to share with you all a concept in Svelte, which is the store. In particular, what is a store? And also, why do we need a store in Svelte? So to explain this, it's easier to look at an example. And so let's take a look at this example that I've prepared for you all. So over here, you can see that there's a sample component in the app. And in a sample component, we have one input and a heading, which tells us the value of the value variable. So over here, when we, in the inputs, we have one input uh, event listener. So every time when we type, uh, the, the it will trigger an input event, and then we will use the value of that input to update the value variable over here. So if I type something, you will see that the value changes uh, immediately. Right, so within a Svelte uh, component, you when any variables is like a state within a component, right? When you change it, uh, you the reference of that variable will be updated immediately. So you can see that changes on the screen immediately, right? But what happens if we are going to break this uh, input and the uh, uh, heading one uh, into two components? And how do we share? Um, variables or states across components right so firstly let's do that first i'm gonna say uh inputs component and i'm gonna have heading component so in the inputs what i will have is just the inputs right it's over here and in the heading i will have just the heading right so there's no uh, callback function so just the heading. So how do I share this value with this value in the input over here? How, how, do, how do I bridge them together so that I can share the same variables or states across the components? All right, so um, if you know about uh, props, probably you can pass it in as a props from one component to another component. Um, but what if in our case, the components are side by side like a sibling. Um, how do I pass one state, uh, inner state within one component to another, to its sibling component? Um, probably you might think of, maybe we can lift the state up. We can define a variable called value over here in the, parent comp in the common parent component. And we can pass this value down to the output. So the inputs will change this value and you pass that value to the output. Yeah, you can do that. But what if I have a few other component? When, in this case, I want uh, a contrive example to show that uh, this may not seem as easy as you think. For example, if I have a parent component that renders the output, and then have another grandparent component that renders the parent. And finally, you use the grandparent component in, in the common, common parent, right? So this app right now, app.svelte component, is actually a common ancestor, right? They don't, they are not exactly the input, uh, the output and input it's not exactly siblings right now. It's like a niece or nephew's uh, grandchildren, right? Uh, yeah, so so how do you pass the states? Do you pass one by one, level by level? Or you create a context over here and share the cross? Well, you can do all that, but you might think one question is that does the app.svelte, should the app.svelte knows about the variable value? Right, because over here it acts like a mediator or ancestor that tries to mediate all the various, uh, all the different states across all the children or grandchildren, like a hub that controls all of them. Right, is that uh, does this app dot felt component should the app dot felt component knows all of this? Should it control all of this, or is there another way or an alternative that you can do? Well, we do not have to share um, the states in across like the component hierarchy, 
we can have it as a separate file. So maybe I'm going to call this as data.js. I'm going to move this to the front because this is the thing that we're going to focus right now. So why not we have this data.js that exports a variable called value as well as a function that we can update it, right? Exports a function that we can update the value, right? And in this case, what we can do here now is that we can come over the input and we can import uh, updates from data. And we're going to call this update instead. And in the output, we're going to say import value from data. And use this value instead, right? So now we can still share across. Uh, we can have a common file that does not, that is beyond the uh, app component hierarchy. And all these components, any components, whether it's a, it's your sibling, your grandchildren, your niece, nephew, or your grandparents, all of them can just import this file. And you can share the states within this file across all the different components that scatter across your application. Right. So here I import the updates from the data for in the input so that we can update that variable. And over here in the output, we can import the value and hopefully it's it changed. Right. So let's try it out. Type the value. Oh. So the value does not update. Well, why? Well, that's because uh, this data.js uh, is a JavaScript file. Uh, it's not any Svelte component. So the variable, when you update, it is not reactive. When you try to change the value over here, yeah, it's changed, it's updated, but it's not reactive. Uh, over here in this output of Svelte, does not know that the value has changed. It will not. Uh, re-render or update the value over here, it does not know that it's updated. So what can we do? Well, again, we can use like a subscription model, um, like an event listener kind of style where we can subscribe to the changes that's happening within the data.js. And then when, it's, when there's a new changes, uh, we try to re-render ourselves, right? So what we're going to do here is can we have a function called subscribe and we can take in a function that lets us know, let us know that uh, what are the functions that you need to trigger or call when something has changed. So um, right now I'm going to have a variable called uh, subscribers and a subscribe method is nothing but pushing it, uh, pushing this function burst.push into this subscribers list. And when we have an update, what we're going to do is we are going to uh, notify all the subscribers that, hey, this value has changed. So subscribers dot for each function, we'll call function, all right? I'm going to trig I'm going to call each of the function, tells them that, hey, uh, the vet, we have a new value. So over here in outputs stores felt, we can call subscribe. And we can subs call this function to subscribe to change. Um, okay. So over here, what should we do? Right. Uh, one simple way we can do is that uh, instead of using value directly. So over here, what we know is that here the value definitely has changed. But how do we tell that this has changed? Or well, one we can do is that we can say value equals value. Okay, that does not work because we can assign to the value. So maybe we can have a variable called underscore value. We use it here. Make sure to use it here as well. And let's see. So we type. Yes, it's changed, right? We subscribe to the data over here. And when there's a new value of the data, we get notified and then we uh, update our internal state, which is the underscore value variable. And when it's the internal state has changed. This will be re-rendered, will be updated, and you'll see the change reflected onto your DOM immediately. So um, the concept of a store is this, right? Uh, you can have a variable or like a data or some sort of states of your application 
that is not uh, presented with, that is not uh, part of your app component hierarchy. It's in a separate file, right? Which you can sh import across different components. It does not matter whether all the components that's importing it are uh, siblings or nephews or grandchildren or grandparents. It's not matter of the how the uh, importy uh, hierarchy within the component app component hierarchy, right? And then you provide a way to change that value. And then to know that when is the value is updated, provide ways to subscribe to it, to know that the data has changed so that uh, you, you get notified, right? So one thing we need to do over here as well is that when we subscribe, we also need to unsubscribe, right? So there's two ways. One is you export another function called uh, unsubscribe, right? Or... And then, so here is that subscribers.splice, subscribers.index of fn. Okay, we can remove it. Or a, an easier way of doing this is that instead of uh, create another API, we return this function immediately from the subscribe method. Right, so here, what we can do over here now in output.svelte, we can import uh, on mount from svelte. which we can subscribe uh, during on mount. And one cool thing about on mount is that you can return some a function during in the on mount, which will be called when this uh, component is un, uh, unmount, right? So, or when the component is destroyed. So here we can return this immediately, which is to return the unsubscribed method so that, um, this function will be removed from the subscription list or else if you um, still have still being subscribed to it then you know you this will always be called whenever the value is changed although this component is no longer on the screen and then it tries to update some sort of component or it will create some sort of a memory leak because you're trying you're still trying to update a component that is no longer being in use right so it has to be retained in the memory so one way you can do it is doing like this, right? Unmount and then return a subscribe. So uh, in essence, this is a very, uh, this is a concept called store in Svelte. You can implement a store like this yourself, or you can use some built-in uh, store creator function that is provided by Svelte, which we'll cover in the next video, uh, which is a readable and a writable. So stay tuned to that video, right? If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you have something that you want to ask, uh, comments down below. I like to read all the comments. And as always, please subscribe to my channel so that you get notified when the next video is out. So see ya, bye bye.